everyone, welcome back to Tennis Picks and Bets. I'm John. You can find me on Twitter at JRTweetsTennis. Well, the second Grand Slam of the year is flying by, and Wednesday will wrap up the quarterfinals. We'll bring you the best bets for Wednesday's action in just a minute. First, though, make sure to like this video. Drop a comment with your favorite bet for Wednesday's quarterfinals below. And, of course, subscribe to the Mayo Media Network YouTube channel. Also, for the audio versions, please go rate, review, and subscribe to Daily Fantasy Sports Picks and Bets, The Mix, at your favorite podcast app. We're into the final day of quarterfinals on Wednesday, and we have three matches to cover once again. We'll start with the men, where we're looking at a pair of overs in the two matches. Uh, first off, Rafael Nadal and Diego Schwartzman. We're going over 29 games at plus 103. People are not going to be fond of betting overs in Rafael Nadal matches at the French Open, and it's understandable. But in this spot, I do like it to get to at least 30 games. 29 is a relatively low number, even for Rafa, in these best three of five matches in the latter stages of the tournament anyway, when, you, when you're playing the better players. Schwartzman's also had some success in the past against Rafael Nadal at extending sets or even taking sets on clay. That's primarily because his style doesn't, it, it's really annoying for Nadal. He gets everything back and Nadal is forced to try and put away winners as opposed to uh, waiting for some errors or waiting for some short balls uh, that he can put away using his, his heavy top spin ground strokes. Schwartzman's not bothered by them. Schwartzman will get them back deep and force Nadal to continue trying to push away and induces a lot of errors from Nadal in his own right. So he's played a few close sets. He's taken a set before on clay from Nadal. The game style matches up well here, and I like him to take this to over 29 games at plus money. The second over is between Novak Djokovic and Matteo Berrettini, over 34 games here at minus 115. This is one where I think Matteo Berrettini is very solid on the dirt. He's got a huge serve, and the last few years, he's improved exponentially. Novak Djokovic is obviously one of the three greatest players of all time. There's no doubt about it. You can make a case at, that he's the greatest. He's the second best on clay right now in the world. But Matteo Berrettini's serve alone should help him hold plenty of games. And Novak looked a bit tentative against Lorenzo Musetti in his last match. If it weren't for Musetti really trying to, you know, cramp up and, and, and experience some lower back pain and then eventually retire after being down 6-1, six, 6-4, six uh, or sorry, 4-love in that, final set before retiring um you know he really did cause some problems for Novak Djokovic able to extend the first two sets to tie breaks and he won them both if we can get if Lorenzo Musetti is able to do that I have no doubt that Matteo Berrettini with just as many weapons and the bigger serve should be able to force at least a tie break or a 7-5 set and potentially snag a set from Djokovic along the way meaning again over 34 is a very low line for any fourth four setter and it could be a relative it could be a line that covers in three sets if Matteo Berrettini can hold uh the way he is capable of the final match I want to talk about comes from the women's side. It's Coco Goff money line against Barbara Krejcikova at minus 112. Look, both these women are in incredible form. Coco Goff's clay season has been incredible. And I was, I will be the first to admit I was not big on her game as recently as a few months ago. I thought her forehand uh, was leaked far too many errors. Her backhand's always been solid, but her serving was also shaky. She, she double faulted a lot in clay season in general this season she has really really improved the serve is more solid the first serve is big she's serving at you know the fastest rates in the tournament right now she's really found a groove uh with that her backhand is as rock solid as it's ever been and her forehand errors are few and far between and if that's the case she's going to be almost impossible to beat it's why she's a phenom it's why she was hyped probably to the point of being overhyped for for the last few years we're finally starting to see what that potential is right now I have all the respect in the world for Krejcikova, who came in off a title in Strasbourg and has been incredible, including a very, very dominant 6-love, six 6-2 six win against Sloane Stevens in her last match. Uh, and that was a match where she said in press she wasn't even feeling well before the match. She felt down. She didn't feel like her best. She didn't feel like she was going to play well. And then she comes out and loses two games out of 14 on the day. So I do respect Krejcik over here, but I think Goff's got the bigger weapons and she can play defense as well. She's not someone who commits a ton of errors. And I'm not quite sure how Barbara Krejcikova's defense is going to hold up against someone who's got the bigger weapons and who also can defend and avoid giving up and coughing up free points. So Goff's money line at minus 112 is the final bet for Wednesday. We'll be back again tomorrow to preview the semifinal action coming your way on Thursday.